in 2012, I went for a gap year. So before that, I was a diploma student. I studied in actuary science for two years. And then I, I stopped. I feel like I wanted to find myself in your age. So I went to eight countries in seven months. And one of them is Afghanistan. So I went there first. I planned to go there for a, a month. So I didn't tell my parents. After I reached there for days, I called my mom. Hey, mom, I'm in Afghanistan. She was very angry. She asked me to you know, finish the trip as soon as possible. And I extended my visa for another one month. I stayed two months there. So before I went there, I, I wasn't sure how the country looked like. Um, usually what I know about this war-torn country is there are a lot, a, a lot of terrorists and there will be a lot of kidnapping happen, especially for the foreign people. So, but I, when I went there, 80% of my time, I was staying with the local people. Um, and then, which is known as reckless and naive. But when I, I really as, experienced the situation there, it's totally different. They hosted me, it doesn't matter, they don't care that uh, they don't know me. And a lot of time, I meet these people on the street because I was a poor backpacker at that time. So I try not to stay in a hotel or hostel. And there's a lot of people I met on the street who try to host me, and that changed my perception on the people in war torn country. And how did I turn into journalist from a backpacker? So that year, that time when I was in the country, I. I visited a village in the central province of the country and I met this old man. I didn't know who is, who, who is him at that time. Then I realized he's uh, one of the village head over there. And he thought I was a, a journalist that at that moment. I wasn't a journalist. I was just, just a tourist, you know, reckless tourist who, who just want to see what's happening in that place. So he looked at me very seriously and he, he told me, hey, young man, when you go back to your country, um, please tell this message to your government that um, we, we need a lot of resource, we need a lot of help in, term, in terms of medical or education need. And he put a lot of hope on me, but I feel so helpless because I, I wasn't a media person back then. I, I've never published any article at that moment of time. So I feel guilty and I feel like I want to do something. So when after a year I went back to Malaysia and I, I enrolled into mass communication. And from there, it started my journey as a media person. So every semester break, I would went for Middle East or Afghanistan or Central Asia to make some report or um, doing some uh, photography. And during every semester, and I use all this, the air knife I got from the story I wrote. And I went for Syria times. When, I, when we, me and some NGOs people first went there, the issue about Syria wasn't highlighted yet. People didn't know so much about the country until 2014 when few foreign journalists got beheaded and that's how the issue got into spotlight and before that we were already we, we, we did experience the air strike and the snipers and the situation is 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 really frustrating i stayed there first trip for a few weeks and Every day we have to run away from snipers and when we are in the front line and the airstrike, just imagine when ev everywhere you go, you just have to uh, run, run away from all these things. There's no life there. And I met a, a school, a university student who are 
20, who were 24 at that time, he had to stop his study to join the civil war because the school is not running at that time when the war is broken, broken up. And I, I met a father who uh, got his legs almost um, amputated and he lost his wife and a few of the children. And I, I met a doctor who had a very different political view about the war with his uh, wife. And two of the kids are with the mother and uh, they are separated from one is in uh, one was in regime area and one another one is in the rebel side. So a lot of these things happen and it, 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 it comes to my mind uh, and my eyes and I, I was feel I feel that the importance of media is, is real, is very, very real. And that's how I continue and I work on all the media stuff and join a lot, do a lot of videos and story. And that's how I came to, I came to realize about uh, how important is the media. And a lot of people ask me, um, if I didn't switch to mass communication, it can be a good opportunity opportunity for me when I enroll in actual science also. But um, because for a media person who have worked for more than half a decade, I think it's seven years for me. Even until today, I still feel like media is a, is a hard choice. You don't make a lot of money and um, it's quite tough and a lot of time you don't feel like being appreciated, but, but I did slowly see the impact of a media person. And I do believe that it doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter when, we all need these so, uh, media things to support and to go into social community. And while now everything is shifting from mainstream media to new media, Facebook or Instagram, even TikTok, Douyin, is very, very important. You don't, you don't, we, we don't see it as a tool just for fun, but we see it as something that can carry a strong message to change the world and to change the society. So yeah, that's, um, that's how the story going on as, for me as a media man. And uh, my message would be, it doesn't matter what things you choose, what career you choose, career path you choose, or what apps you are using, or maybe you, are, you want to venture as a YouTuber or I don't know, a popular, uh, 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 an artist in TikTok, yeah, go, go ahead. Um, yeah, I think there will be a day that we, we will see the impact that, the, we, there will be a day that we'll see the impact of the things that we are doing. And that's all about my speech today. Thank you.